There's no further delay. We're going to get right into the series. The last message here, weird. And I want to talk to you about a weird view of money. Now, you with me? Say amen. amen. All right, so buckle up. Then. We're going to take off. I'm going to go through this. Well, amen, dismiss you, all that good stuff, okay? Do you have your Bible with you this morning? Can I see it, please? Your smartphone, all that stuff works for me. It's, it's really cool. I know, I know, I know, we, I know that we're in the 21st century and you, and you download it and all this good stuff. So that counts. All right? If you do not have one, it will be on the screen for you. You can thank our media minister, Chad Hafner, and his team. They will make sure that it gets put on the screen. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21 and verse 20. Proverbs 21 and verse 20. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, not that it is more spiritual or better or anything, it's just I, I enjoy it. It, it is uh, on about a fifth grade level, so it's easy for me to read, uh, and so I enjoy it, alright? And so if you have a different translation, that's okay, just follow along, just catch on quickly. Here's what the Bible says, the wise have wealth and luxury, alright? How many of you wise? Anyway, the wise have wealth and luxury, but... Fools spend whatever they get, but fools spend whatever they get. Proverbs 21, 20. The wise have wealth and luxury, but the fools spend whatever they get. I think it's King James. I, I'm not real sure in verbatim this, but it talks about how the godly will save, how the godly uh, basically manage the money. They, they, they're stewards of it. And we're, we're foolish, all right? And trust me, you listening to me say Amen. amen. Trust me, this is not like walking up to somebody and saying, hey, fool. It's not, you do not want to be a biblical fool, all right? If you do your homework, you do not want to be a biblical fool. This is not a good thing here, nor is it kitschy or is it hip to say fool. It, this, this is biblical ignorance that will cost you majorly in the end. And so I want to educate you. I want to be educated. Trust me, every sermon is kicking my tush before or... Lewis Maximus, um, it, it is kicking my tail before I preach them, and so I wanted to share with you, if we're going to be weird, now you listen to me, come up here with me, okay? For those of you that have not been with us and haven't followed us on YouTube and all the other ways, podcasts and all that stuff, here's, here's the series in a nutshell, and no, it does not mean that you can leave after I say this, okay? Here's the series in a nutshell. If you want what many have, or the majority will then continue to do what many are doing and the majority do. But, and we like the big buts in the Bible, right? But, if you want what few have, you have to be willing to do what few do. The launch text was where Jesus says there's two ways, there's two gates, there's two types of people, two groups of people. There is the broad way, that is the normal. That's the path of least resistance. Matthew captured this in Sermon on the Mount. He, he, listen, he, he talks about how you can, you can get on the broad way or you can be weird, not in a bad way, not in a good way, but in a godly way. You can be weird, different, peculiar people. All right, Some of you got a jump start on that. You can be weird and you can do what few are doing and get on the narrow way because it says few that will find it. You can follow that, right? Pick it up on the way down. What you understand is the Bible, not my opinion. And so I wanted to challenge you that I want us to be people, no matter if we're 10, 100, or 1,000 strong, that we're weird people. That we do things contrary to society. That we do not fit in because we were born again to stand out. That we are people that get off of the broad way and we get on to the narrow way and we do what God tells us to do. We just do weird things. You ever thought about it? You forgive. Even though you don't have to, you do because the Holy Spirit lives inside you and your word tells you. I'm just giving you a background of where we are in this series. You ever thought about it? As Christians, we just do weird things. And just like last week, man, we, 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 you guys, man, it was cool after the service. Corey was telling me that, that and I didn't know this, but I told you the church would match you dollar for dollar. And you, you give 500 so we put 500 You sent $1,000 to Paul and his family in Rwanda to make sure they get that, that home. But, but what I didn't know is that prior to that, prior to knowing how much it was, 550 is what it takes to, to build a house. If I understand my numbers right, remember, I'm trying to close remember. What was cool was, you listening to me, what was cool is that they were having to choose between a kitchen and a bathroom. Now, which one did you think they were choosing? I just, I just thought I'd throw it out to you. I don't know which one you choose. I kind of see where your heart fly. Okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but guess what? Regardless, guess what they don't have to do now? They don't have to choose. Matter of fact, you know, for a mud hut, they're going to make a master sweet out of that thing. You know what I'm saying? 
do weird things. We do weird things. We, we do what you do. We love those that are unlovable. We'll go to the soup kitchen. We'll go to the soup kitchen. And there will be people that will smell like urine over there. Did you know that? I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just being real with you. And you know what I'll see people doing? I'll see people love them, especially our young adults over there. They'll love them. They'll smell like a $2 bottle of wine. Now I don't expect the kids to understand what that, <laughs> what that smell is. <laughs> Nor you. But we love them. We just do weird things. And this morning, I want to remind you that we, 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 above all things, have to have a weird view of our money. Now, let me read a couple things to you. It's kind of set it in context of why this is important. The Wall Street, Wall Street Journal, not the Bible. The Wall Street Journal says this. 70% of Americans are living, 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Don't raise your hand, just think about it. Are you in that? 70%. Most of us are. Most of us are. That's just reality. Most, 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 52% of marriages end in divorce. Now listen to me. You're saying, oh, news flash, man. Stay with me until my Monday this morning, okay? You said, I picked a great Sunday to come. <laughs> listen, listen. And of those that divorce, in the first seven years of marriage, 90, 90% say that money problems cause their marriage to end. I think that's pretty flippant and credible in a bad way. I thought, man, I thought some of our major arguments were, where do we want to eat? What do you want to eat? What do you want? No, I don't know. I don't care. But some of the most heated debates is about money and about finances. Especially when I go to swipe the debit card and there's nothing in there, just, or, or they tell me uh, it's been rejected. I'm like, huh? Don't look at me like you never had to happen to you. Some of you didn't swap because you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, cra it's crazy, now, and this is not this is this is not a sermon to get your money. It has got nothing to do with that. We want you to give. I want you to find the joy in giving. I'll get to that. This I just I just want you to be weird. I want you to have a different view of money. And people, and listen, I, I, I'm honored to have uh, Robert Smith uh, with us. He'll tell you, I mean, he said it here, here a while back in the gathering we were at. He, he's been with me a long time, or he's been, he's been a deacon with me, he served with me, he knows. Man, my, my reputation precedes me with my integrity when it comes to finances, when I run a church. I don't know who gives, I don't know what they give, I'll know the numbers because I'll, I usually will have what we do here an executive pastor or somebody that will report to me and tell me what, I, I, but, but one thing that I don't do, I don't touch it. And if I do touch it, it's very quick. I don't want it. So it's, it's just not about me getting your money. It's not about you buying me a new truck because I'm always fussing about the little truck that I drive. Uh, or I'm not, it's, no, it's nothing about that. I don't want to raise. Well, let me rethink that. <laughs> Hold that thought, okay? But, no, no, no. I, 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 I just want you to get weird and have a weird view of it, okay? I'm telling you what to do with it. I'm just telling you how you view it, okay? So I want you, I want you to get some of these statistics. And, and the reason Jesus talks so much about it, so you have to get really mad at him because he's the one that talks so much about it, is because he discovered this concept long before us preachers did, is that, well, your wallet somehow is attached to your heart. It is. I'll prove it to you scripturally. He said, I, he said to be careful, I find your treasures. Not because of the treasures, but because of what? Because of your heart. He said, because where your treasures are, where, where, where will your heart leave? It were your treasures. So it's, it's here or it's there. You're building a portfolio this side or you're building a kingdom portfolio. Do you get me? And so I want you to see the statistics about a marriage and about couples and about how if you're not in a relationship or you're in, in your second or whatever it is, I want you to get this is a serious situation. And I want you to be different than everybody else. I want that we produce in this community believers that look and do things that are weird. People stand back and go, that's weird. And so we have to get this understanding that he talked about it just about more than anything. And the reason he spoke so much about it was because our wallet is connected to your heart. Now watch this. It is a behavior pattern that causes your money problems. Now some of this is, is, is directly quoted from Dave Ramsey. Yes, I've done my homework. Yes, I went through his university. I'm still struggling. But anyway, it's a behavior problem. It, it, it's a cause and effect. It, it, it's a sowing and reaping thing. You understand what the scripture says. If you sow stupidly, you will reap desperately. If you sow stupid, 
you will reap desperate. Let me say it again. If you sow stupid, you will reap desperate. You understand me? And, and, and so when you get these, when you get this thought, you get this heart truth. And so what you do creates where you go. Let me say it again. This is great tweetable things here. What you do creates where you go. Alright? Either you want to go this way or you want to go this way. Alright? Either you either want to get better or just continue to get worse. But what you do creates where you go. And, and listen to this. This is, this is this is so cool. I want you to get this. Personal finances is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. Quote unquote, Dave Ramsey. Not Jesus, but he is the leading authority when it comes to finances and doing it the biblical way. In my day when I was in college, when I was in seminary, it was Larry Burkett. I still have all of his resources. And when you listen to Dave Ramsey, he will often quote none of them the late Larry Burkett. And all Larry was doing was quoting Jesus. I just want to make sure we get it right, okay? And so, personal finances, 80%, 80 behavior, and 20% head knowledge. I want you to get a weird view of it. So once you understand that, you need a few core principles to avoid, listen to me, the normalcy of money. If you, if you will live right now like no one else, you can live later like no one else. You ever heard that before? If you listen to Dave Ramsey, you have a promise. He said, do now what no one else is doing so that down the road where you're going, you can do what others cannot do. And I promise you, you listen, you'll get it this morning. And so let me give you, let me give you just a few principles. If you take notes, they'll be on the screen. I'm going to go through them, break each one down. I'm going to do it very quickly. You ready? You bubbled up? So here we go, right? I'm, I'm almost out of time. And I'm going to go right through this and get to the main one. There's four to get to the fifth. Right, it doesn't five come out of four. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I'm going to give you four to give the fifth principle. So I'm going to give you five all together. Got that? I'm going to preach 20 minutes on each one. Do the math. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. We got my handkerchief up here today, so I'm going I'm I'm to melt, but I'm, so I'll be in a hurry, okay? The first one is this. Listen to me. It'll be on the screen. Written game plan. You've got to have a written game plan. This is, this is not original with me. This is all scriptural based and it all comes from a seminar or a lesson that I sat under with Dave Ramsey. He was teaching at a church. Pull these notes out. I want you to get them this week, okay? With a few of hendritology in there, okay? Based on the scripture. You gotta have a written game plan. You gotta have a written game plan. Listen to these two things. You gotta put it on paper because you wanna be on purpose. You have to have, as a matter of fact, you say, well, that's not even built. Yes, it is. He said, what king does not first sit down and count the cost? You understand? What builder don't first sit down and count the cost? It's called planning. And so when you put it on paper, when you put it out there for purpose, and you have this written game plan, it, it's called, it, listen to me, it's called a, it's the dreaded B word. Anybody know it? Well, I shouldn't have asked you. Somebody? Who I was close. I thought I might get something else. I was proud that you never know. That was close. That was scary for a second, right? Budget. It's called a budget. It's called a budget. As a matter of fact, if, if 90% of those that divorce in the first seven years, if 90% of those marriages that divorced in the first seven years or broke up was directly related, related to money, it gives it lends itself to believe that most couples fight a lot about money. Yes. Amen. And if you're single, you fight with yourself. There's a war in here. <laughs> uh, to see if you listen. And so, isn't it, wouldn't you rather, listen to me, wouldn't you rather put the kids to bed, turn the TV off, put down the flipping phone, put down the flipping phone, and fight at least once a month instead of every night? As you say, tonight's budget time, honey. I think that would work out better for you in the long run than it would be to fight every time you turn around and there's no money in the account because you need twenty dollars for the gas or fifty if you drive those big old trucks. My little truck fills up on twenty, baby. <laughs> there are some perks too. On paper, on purpose. 
have a written plan. Have a written plan. Who does not first down? As a matter of fact, it says the will, wise, and joy, have wealth and luxury. But the foolish spend everything they get. Be on time and on target. Have a plan and have a purpose. Put it on paper, my friends. The second point I want to give you or principle about having a weird view of money is, this this one, I, I, I couldn't wait for this one. Act your ways. <laughs> Act your wage. Act your wage. If, let me back up and plug here a minute. Because some of you are going, this is nuts, man. I can't wait for the day to get out of here. I thought it was going to be about Jesus. I, I'm giving I promise, I promise, I promise. It's all about Jesus. I promise. None of this, none of this will work overnight. Can I say it? Can you say it again? Amen. None of this will work overnight. Reaping and sowing. You don't plant it, go back out, and get a tomato off of it. You understand that? Okay? Stay with me. So I want you to understand. Some of you, some of you will go through these whole things, and, 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 it'll, and you'll say, that is <laughs> that's laughable. That's a pipe dream. That's bogus. I've been in debt, will always be in debt. I've been this size, so I'm just going to keep eating cookies. Amen. Uh, hey, that, that is the mentality of most of America. Done it this long, I'm going to keep on doing it. Always going to be in debt, might as well keep on. Act your wage. I had another cookie part in there. Did you know, seriously, can, for, for, can I digress a moment? Dave Ramsey said once he leads people through this, once his team leads, that most of them, not only do the marriage get healed, but most of them get healthier and lose weight. I was shocked too. I was like, holy smoke. I don't have to work out two hours a day. Just saying. But I'm serious as I can be about that. I'm serious as I can be. We're going to way, isn't it? I'm sorry to our guests, we are normally this way, so you just have to kind of get used to it, all right? <laughs> Act your way, live on less than you make, you are not Congress. <laughs> live on less than you make. Live, that's weird, isn't it? That, I mean, it's, it's weird. Live on less than you make. This is the world we live in. You listening, say amen. This is the world we live in. We pull up at the red light in our new six-year finance car and we look over to look cool to somebody we don't know. You don't even know them. And what does it matter? You, I, I got, I got, I, look at all this. And who are you trying to impress? You drive up in the church in your big Cadillac and then you go home to your shack. Priorities. Liabilities or assets? Most people live their life with liabilities and not assets. What is an asset? Something that's going to gain money. Something that's going to get you wealthy. Something that's going to increase. A liability is a car you drive it off a lot. You're down five grand. We do crazy things in America. We take a car that is running. We drive it to a lot. We get out of that car, we not only give them the car, but we give them three or four or five thousand dollars, and then we, we leave with a sixty thousand dollar car paying six years on the highest interest rate. You understand? We do weird things. That's crazy, man. That's the normal norm. I think it's funny that the students are aiming at this better than you are. <laughs> when, they, when they broke. Now, I know why Sherry ain't been smoking. He walk it where he goes. And I got mad respect for that. But if you ever want to open that restaurant down on the beach, right off, see, you don't think I'm listening to you when I'm driving you home. If you want to ever open that restaurant across from the beach because you want to go to culinary school, then you better apply these principles now. Y'all listen. 
<laughs> His friends are like, hey, man, because I want to eat free there. <laughs> but you and I already got this understanding that I always eat free there, right? Always. And his family. <laughs> I gotta pay for you. I'll take care of that, son. I'll take care of that. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it off of the expense. I'm just kidding. Listen. Live on less than you made. Who are you trying to impress? I told the students this morning. I told you, and I told you that I told them. Who is your audience? It's just one. And I don't mean one community church. I'm trying to be silly. I'm talking about God. It's just. Who are you trying to impress? And let me say this. It's not a bad thing to have. It's just. The wise have wealth and luxury. It's not a bad thing. We, America is really the only place as well that makes it sound like some ungodly thing that you're not a Christian if you don't live in a cave and ride a pack and the church. It didn't even want you to have that. He owns the Cadillac from every Chevrolet dealership from here to Buck 10 or wherever. He owns it all. The cattle on the town. I'm not going to ride a cow church. I'd rather have a Cadillac. He'd rather me have a Cadillac. He wants to bless you. So he gets the glory. So he can say, that little pole dump boy over there from that mill hill. Look what, I'm, look what I'm doing in his life and through his life. I'm not talking about saying, poof, give me the jet in the big mansion. I'm not talking about the name of the stuff. I'm talking about applying these principles and being weird about your money and your view of it and understand it. Listen, I have to have a written game plan. I've got to act my way. Number three, you've got to save money. This is not original with me. It is biblical. It wasn't original with Dave Ramsey. It wasn't with Larry Burkett. This is all biblical based. I dare you to go home and study all the cross references I would have given you if I wanted to be here two hours. Save money. Three areas that he teaches. What's the first one? Shh. Leo, no. No, just Leo, no. Don't try. Great, great participation, son. <laughs> Whose idea was to put the students on the front row? <laughs> <laughs> the first one that you want to save money for. Emergency. Emergency. Anybody ever had an emergency happen? Anybody have a washing machine start leaking everywhere? Anybody have a dishwasher? Just go. I mean, first of all, first of all, you better have a dishwasher. Right. Refrigerator right. break. Lee, you, you ever had a tire get up one morning and the tire go flat? Uh, you ever had a car break down? Yes. Well, you should have fixed the tire. You should have paid attention to the noise of the motor, man. I'm just kidding. You ever had things happen? Hey, let's get real serious for a moment. You, you ever go to work one day and they say, "Hey, we're cutting out your whole department." Do you know that it'll make it a whole lot easier? It'll make it a whole lot easier to take that blow than if you've got six to eight months in, re in reserve for emergency. It makes it a whole lot easier if they say, we're cutting your job out and you've got about 20 grand saved up. 10 grand. Somebody say, I'll take $100. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you to get weird. I'm, I'm serious. It doesn't happen overnight. It's, it doesn't happen overnight. C count on your hand how many wealthy people you know. I'm talking about you know personally. Did you go put your feet under their table and eat? I'm talking about wealthy. I guarantee you it's probably one hand that you can count them on. It's a weird thing. Wealth is weird. Your view of money is weird. And if you're going to do this, you've got to have a written game plan. You've got to act your way. And you've got to save. You've got to save first of all for mercy because things are going to happen. Boom, boom, going to hit the fan. It's just going to happen. And I don't mean you piss a lot off. You might want to kick them in the fan. I'm just saying, it's going to happen. Emergency. Mercy. Somebody's going to get sick. Hey, you may go to the doctor, God forbid, and they diagnose you with cancer. You can't work anymore. You may leave here this afternoon and suffer a catastrophic or a major life-changing stroke. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm being real with you. I'm, I'm silly when I preach because I want you to get engaged. And I want you to It is a teaching technique. I want you to get it. But I want you to understand this stuff happens. You all right? Save for emergencies. Save secondly, not only for emergencies. Save to pay cash. What is this? That's a best one. That's, that's a bitchy baby. <laughs> no, you cannot have it. I had to pull a log around for this. You cannot have it, y'all. All right? You understand? I had to preach for you to have that. I got to put up with you to have that. Did, did you know? Listen. Save. I should have brought a thousand up here, shouldn't I? <laughs> You got you dead lock, don't stay suck that down. <laughs> it's your dog, man. Suck that down. Hundred dollar bill. Save to spend cash. 
I love this. I, I, I love this. MIT did a study with MRIs. Listen to me. They did a study. They published a study. They said, watch this. They found that when you spend cash, it activates, you listen to me, the pain center of the brain. Oh, see, what happens is, what happens is, you're an old Benji, you're an old Ben. <laughs> we boys. I mean, we tight, you know what I'm saying? I'm not so stupid. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you get tight though, man. You get tight. And you go to, and you go to go. And then you look down and you like, you, you realize that. Did you know what this in that same study, MRI, MRI study of brains? Using cash, you listen, y'all may y'all know what you get this morning. Using cash activates the pain in your brain. Did you did you know that they also studied the use of, of your debit card or plastic? You know what it does? <laughs> Flat line, baby. Like you don't have a brain. I'll pay for it later. And next thing you know, you're $30,000 in credit card debt. Master card. Master card. Discover the hell it will bring. I mean, I'm just saying. American bondage. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I owe on my home. Matter of fact, we have two homes that we have mortgage on. Thank God, someone helps us with these second ones. Hopefully we'll buy it. Pray. Promise that. Amen. We have, we have student loans that have been around a long time. So I don't want you to think I get up here and, and, and we don't own cars. I mean, all, I mean really, that's really all we do. Do you, do you understand? And that's why I have a gym membership. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying that you can do. I want you to understand I'm not being hypocritical and preaching down to you. I'm telling you these things are hurting me just as, but I, I promise you, you act as if you have no brain and that's the normal of society just to swipe that card or to go online and put your number in. And you hit, and this is the, you're so stupid, you hit save. Like save that number because you're going to be back to that side, Amazon. Oh man, that hurts, don't it? I told Sandra after this year, I said, I want to do a really weird thing, especially after her birthday now. No more gifts for each other. Nothing. That'll really help me twofold. Not only save some money, but I get buying gifts and making sure they're on time and all that good stuff. All right? Some of you may go, shit, something going to be weird like that. I'm going to save money. It's too weird. It's too weird stuff. Pay cash for it. The, the other thing, too, is that I learned, I learned this with Sandra. The, uh, I learned this. If you go into these electronic stores, if you've got cash, I'm telling you they'll negotiate. You say, no, they won't. Uh, you start counting that money out, they will start following you around like you got, you got food in your pocket like they're a pet. Because they want your money. And so here's the principles. Save money. Save for emergencies. Save to pay cash. And save for the future. Proverbs 13, 22 says, good people leave an inheritance for their grandchildren. You say, they ain't getting my money. <laughs> it's talking about more than money. Talking about a way of life. Be weird. Be different. But you understand? I'm, I'm, I promise you, we'll have fun with the message. It's the last one in the series. It's not a, I bless God, he does. Hey, let me know. I'm not five minutes from the Lord. Just being real with it. Just teach you some principles. All right? Okay? So he said, I, brought my, I brought my cousin. I wanted to hear you spit. He spoke a camel. I've already spit a few times. But I ain't sporting yet. Just stay with me. I ain't over yet. I want you, I want you, I want you to say, well, it's because y'all just did a half million dollar. Capital fundraise. No, 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 no. no. Man, I'm not here to get your money. God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your money. I want your heart. I want you to have a proper view of things. I want you to be weird. You're not like everybody else. And so you're saved. You write a game plan, act your wage, save money, and the one that Ramsey's most known for is get out of debt. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. And it's going to lead me to the fifth one that I cannot wait to preach. Get out of debt. So you're saying, man, that is a pipe dream. I'll never be out of debt. Well, with that attitude, you probably won't. I'm just being real with you. The Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. The debtor is what to the lender? Can you say it again? Slave. 
And I promise you, I promise you, I, I am not talking about the American history of slavery, anything like that. I'm talking about literally in this day and age, they literally, in those in bondage, and, and the taskmaster would take the wheel and pow. I'm, I'm Sometimes, because of the finances you have, you feel like he, they, they have beat you raw. And so our goal, our goal, the principles that we're living is to get debt free. This will not happen overnight. But if you will live like no one else now and do what few do, then you can live like no one else later and still be doing what few are doing to get debt free. Now, the reason it's so important for us is this last and fifth major point. Is all of this builds to this. You listen to me? Here's, here, here, here's what here's what you come to give. To give. God wants to get you to a place where you can just simply give. And I mean just give. I'm talking like weird, ridiculous, crazy giving. As a matter of fact, I want you to I want you to, to, to write this down. If you take notes, I did not have to put it on screen, so I want you to get this. I want you to get this. 2 Corinthians 9:7 says this, and it's a quote, alright? It says this, God loves a person who gives cheerfully. God loves a person who gives cheerfully. When we, when we do these things, when we have a written game plan, we have a written game plan, when we act our wage, we will begin to save for emergency so we can pay cash. If we don't have it in our pocket, then we're not going to put it on credit. All right, I understand. And some of you are already in debt. You start working it out and so that you can get debt free, okay, so that you live... <coughs> All right. Here's what ultimately. Here's ultimately what you're trying to get to is that you can get to a place where you are just free. Just give. Just to give. Just free. Just to give. And when you get to that place, you listen, when you get to that place where you're just free to give, you'll start having fun. Right. I mean, you'll mess people up. That's crazy, man. It is crazy. As a matter of fact, this is not a lot of money. But I guarantee you the girl that worked at Apotopia a couple weeks ago, I guarantee you she would be college age. Anybody, some of you may still be there. Anybody college broke or been college broke? I mean, that's broke, man. That's broke broke, right? And so she would be college age. And she had to put up with all of us. They had something we had, didn't have. They really know. And it was, it was, it was, they had to put up with my wife and that look. And, and so as we go to leave, as we go to leave, Sandra says, I think we're going to give her something. That's because she's going to give me, huh? <laughs> they want to give her something. And so I absolutely pull the wallet out. Get the pull my wallet out. I took a 20 out. Not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Took the 20 out. Went back in there. We went back in there. We said, hey, we just want to give this to you. Put it up with us. I mean, just blown, slammed away. I'm talking like grinning from ear to ear. Like, like really? Take yourself out there. Do something fun for yourself. You got to practice what you preach, you understand? It, it, it's fun. I, I heard a story. This, is, this one's not me, but this is what I'm talking about. This is all this is so you can get to a place where you can actually function as Christ wants you to function. You have one hand to receive and the other to give away because you you're free and you have fun doing it. You just mess people up. Uh, Dave Ramsey told this story in that same seminar. He said he has a buddy uh, that, that on Thanksgiving, he went to the Waffle House in his town. And uh, it, 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 let me just be real with you. All right? Anybody go to Waffle House? I'm serious. No, do you work at Waffle House? I'm about to say, John? Fuck my boy, Brother Duncan, boy. That Waffle House paying him, man. He's flying in the nets, man. Hey, man. He said, I've been practicing this stuff here. No, 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 listen, stay back to the store. He said, he said, he said he, here's the thing. If you work at Waffle House, let, I'm being honest with you. If you work at Waffle House and you're working on Thanksgiving, guess what you need to do? You need to work. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not knocking Waffle House. Or any, I'm, not, I'm not, man. I am not knocking it off. I'm not knocking it off. But if you're working at Waffle House on Thanksgiving and not with your family, you either just don't have a family, but more probably nine times out of ten, you just really need to work. And so this friend of us, he said, I went in, got me, got me some breakfast, come back out. He said, the lady was with me. He said, when she went to get the chick, she, 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 he's, he's out watching, right? He left her a $500 tip. He said, and this is what they were baby, this is what he said. He said, his friend said, I watched her do the Snoopy dance all over Waffle House. Man. <laughs> Fun, man. 
God loves a cheerful giver. That word in the Greek is, is helios. It is when we get our English word for hilarious. It's just, you ever done anything just laughable? Just give like giving to that girl's college brother. It was just 20 bucks, man. But it, it was just, it was hilarious, man. It was a blast to do things. And, and we've done all kinds of stuff like that. I, I got another thing that's pretty hilarious that I guarantee you that he laughed when he wrote. I, I, I got this really cool check in the mail. And, uh, and, and, and here's a check for one future for $10,000. And that'd be a good place for you to fall. <laughs> so, you know, just, just, just uh, there for me yesterday. Now, I will not say who it says. <laughs> and, this, and, 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 and as a symbol of the impact your presence has had on us, as well as our support to continue impacting others. We've ministered to their family. And uh, it is. <laughs> Some people are not ready for $10,000. <laughs> Just to write a personal check for $10,000. They don't even live around here. It's the second time that I've received $10,000 since we launched this ministry. First time I renovated a building, helped renovate a building. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Someone had, someone had no idea. I had no idea when they when they were in contact with this family said just say hey, this whatever you're going to give me just put it toward one future i knew already because he told us i said that was very generous of you you just give us ten thousand dollars i'm telling you i'm telling you it may not be ten thousand for you it may not even be twenty for you it may be ten dollars or five dollars i promise you if you will get a weird view of money so that money does not have you, but you have the money, <coughs> life will become a whole lot funner than it is right now. For some of you, it is destroying you. It is destroying every relationship. This is why it's so important. It's not about getting money and having a capital fundraising campaign. It's not about that. It's about how it's destroying you and destroying all the relationships around you. And I promise you, I promise you, from the start with a written plan. You will live your ways. You will act your way. You will live those things out. You will save. You will get yourself out of there. Even if starting with small areas. Pay one off, pay another one off. It's amazing how many times I've heard how many times have I heard people say, hey we paid the car off, but where'd the money go? We paid that loan off, but where'd the money go? No written game plan. You can't track it. You have no idea. You know, two separate pages is, as a, as a, in a relationship. And you're not having fun. I promise you. I'm not trying to be rude or uncouth, but when we come together in a relationship, it's a whole lot of fun if you do it right. So I, I want you to understand. The reason he wants you to go by this is so that he can free you so that you can have fun. Stand here.